Listen, guys, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm feeling 22. Welcome to episode 22 of Alternative Jargon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Alternative Jargon episode number 22. Uh, It just felt fitting today to talk about Taylor Swift. Uh, Look, I, every time I introduce a new episode, I uh, my introduction, I go, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Alternative Jargon. But, you know, I started looking at my analytics, and turns out there's not a whole lot of ladies tuning in, okay? I'm a little bit lacking, so 29% of my Spotify listeners and 10% of my YouTube viewers are uh, females. So today, this is my feeble attempt Uh, to target a new market, okay? I'm a marketing miner here at Bloomsburg, and this is simply an exercise uh, to test my product on a new segment of the podcast industry, the podcast market. So let's see if we can tap into a new sample of the population. Uh, I'm just kidding. Look, I'm um, I'm not actually on my knees begging for a new audience. I actually just realized that Um, You know, Taylor Swift is at a level right now in pop culture where I can no longer ignore her and not talk about her on the show, okay? Alternative jargon is sort of like the gauge for pop culture, okay? If I talk about it on this show, you know it's relevant. You know it's going to get a lot of press after I speak the words about it. Um, You know, tens of people watch this, so um, yeah. I sort of get to set the set the agenda in the media a little bit. You know, the same way that the Kardashians unfortunately set the beauty standards. Um, I do the same thing with uh, news stories on this show. Um, so yeah, Taylor Swift is culturally significant enough that I can no longer ignore Uh, what's going on with that situation. So, you know, Taylor Swift has taken over the world this year. Um, I don't really understand why. It's sort of a surprise to me, okay? The last hit of Taylor Swift's that I recall was when I was in, like, seventh grade. I kind of thought that she was, you know, history. I'm not going to lie. I kind of thought she was history. I... You know, every song of hers that I'd know is like at least eight years old at this point. But I am obviously not in the bubble that her and her fans are. Obviously not. Um, You know, before this summer, before the whole uh, Eras Tour thing... I, you know, whenever I thought of Taylor Swift, I thought of, like, elementary school horse girls from 2009. Okay, I thought that it was just people that wear, like, sparkly cowgirl boots to school and are obsessed with horses. I know, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but that's just, that was my uh, impression. This summer, she sold out every stadium in America. She did. She performed, what is it, 44 songs at every one of her concerts. I didn't know she had that many songs. I know Blank Space and Love Story. I thought she had like maybe three or four more besides that. But apparently she has more. Apparently she has more. And, you know, that was news to me as well. Look, I'm sorry. I should probably not be talking about Taylor Swift because I really know nothing about her. But I want to because I am, uh, all jokes aside, I'm impressed by her. I'm impressed by the fact that she is selling out every stadium. It's crazy. I don't know if there's a single other artist right now that could do that. It's It's a big accomplishment. So, you know, I've been putting off discussing this phenomenon for a while She's been doing it all summer. It's not even summer anymore. It's fall. And she's still cracking every headline. But, you know, I give credit where credit's due. Um, Like I said, I I can't remember the last time an artist's tour was this big. I can't think of an artist 
that could do this right now. I can think of a lot of artists that could sell out like NBA arenas, but there's a big difference between that and selling out every NFL stadium in the country. Huge difference uh, to sell out a stadium and still have thousands of people outside the stadium just so they can overhear one of her songs, right? It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Um, Now, I don't understand the craze myself, right? Uh, Taylor Swift's music plays in grocery stores and dentist's office alike. She's a huge corporate hit, okay? And it's not quite my cup of tea. It's not quite my cup of tea. I think the longest and the most I've ever heard Taylor Swift's music was probably waiting to get my wisdom teeth taken out a few years ago at the orthodontist's office, okay? So while I'm sitting there, um, you know, scared to get put under anesthesia, Taylor was jamming away on the radio, all right? While I'm laying there at the dentist, hoping that I don't have a cavity this time, um, T-Swifty's jamming away, which, by the way, little humble brag here, never had a cavity, guys, never had a cavity, but... uh, You know, I'm I'm shopping through Walmart. I'm trying to decide if I want name brand or store brand Reese's Puffs. T Swifty is putting on a show on Walmart radio. All right. She's putting on an absolute show. Corporate, just probably the greatest, maybe the best corporate artist we've ever heard. All right. Um, there, There are a lot of artists. I feel like that only exists in grocery stores or, you know, they make music just good enough and catchy enough to play while you're waiting in the return line at Target. Okay. Uh, sir, was there something wrong with the product? Um, yeah. So I got these pants, uh, last week and there was just like too much blank space in the, uh, the legs the leg area. So I should probably have, I probably have to go with a, uh, the slim instead of the straight leg. Sorry. Sorry. That song. I've just heard it eight times while I was waiting in line. It's just in my head. Um, that's all right, sir. As long as there's nothing wrong with the pants. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the pants. Um, probably going to go with a, uh, size 22 waist. I don't know. I'm just feeling the 22. Dang it, again. Sorry. That's okay, sir. So there's nothing wrong with the pants. Yeah, nothing wrong with the pants. All right. I've just heard those two songs eight times while I was here. I apologize. Okay. Um, you know, I feel like there's artists that exist just to make corporate music. And there's nothing wrong with that. I respect the hustle. You make a, uh, you know, a generic pop song and... Those those songs make way more money than any type of music that tries to make art, okay? Any type of music that tries to actually be like something kind of original, that's not where the money's at. And that's not just music, that's every type of art. Now, I'm not saying that's what Taylor Swift completely is before everyone comes at my neck, okay? But she does have some grocery store bops, all right? Um... Yeah. So don't call me a hater. I'm not a hater of Taylor Swift. If I was a hater of Taylor Swift, I would not make a whole episode about her. If I was a hater of Taylor Swift, I wouldn't take time out of my day to sit here and talk about her. I wouldn't do that. I'm giving her the time of day. Um, and honestly, hats off to Taylor Swift for such a successful tour. Um, it is remarkable and I do like a few of her songs. I have, I think, 1,300 liked songs on Spotify. I think two of those are Taylor Swift. So she's in the mix there. She's in the mix. Um, but yeah, I'm just really intrigued by this whole thing because I really want to try to understand what all the hype is about. Usually when something is this big, I'm like, wow, I really understand why everyone's so crazy about it. And I'm trying to figure that out for Taylor Swift because I just don't feel it. I just don't feel it. Um, You know, I think a lot of 
people, like especially girls, uh, basically grew up with Taylor Swift. So I completely understand that. That makes sense. That's cool, right? They went from horse girls when she was doing country and now they're just girls, right? But Taylor Swift used to be country, I think. But yeah, um, you know, there are very few things in our world today, whether it be um, in the realm of art, like music, TV shows, movies, stuff like that. There's very few things that can bring so many millions of people together in such a passionate and crazed way. And so to me, the whole Eras Tour thing really does feel like it's not out of this uh, current time period. So the reason I say that is because everyone's sort of in their own little media bubble today because you can find um, content and you can find music that completely pretty much suits your needs, right? So everyone's got different interests. Everyone's got different things that they like to watch, that they like to laugh at, that they like to, you know, whatever. So everyone's in their own little bubble. And so it's really hard to find common ground between people when it comes to stuff that they enjoy now. Maybe not really hard, but definitely a lot harder than it was 30 years ago when there were 10 TV stations and 10 radio stations, right? And everyone shared basically the same content. Uh, it's not like that anymore. And so the whole Eras Tour thing really blew my mind because it was like, wow, there's this many people that are on board to shell out a thousand dollars to go see Taylor Swift. And I think that's pretty amazing. Um, whether I like her music or not, I'm amazed by it. I think it's crazy. So it's, it sort of reminds me of like Michael Jackson, right? And people, people were going insane over this tour. Um, like I said, spending, um, gargantuan amounts of money to go see her perform, just selling out everywhere. They had to, at certain one of her shows, they had to wheel Taylor Swift to the stage in big roadie boxes that were marked as cleaning supplies so that she wouldn't get like swarmed just on her way to the stage. When was the last time an artist was that big and that, you know, that much of the center of people's world. I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of the last time somebody was that big. So it is amazing. It is amazing. Um, there were rumors that I am going to get to the whole Travis Kelsey thing. How could I not? How could I not? But apparently uh, when, after the Chiefs game this past weekend... Did you guys know Taylor Swift was at the Chiefs game, by the way? She was there. I know it, that's, that story sort of went like under the radar a little bit. But she was there. And uh, supposedly she was cheering on one of the Chiefs players. So I don't know if you heard about that. But yeah, apparently they had to wheel her out in a popcorn machine after the game. <laughs> All right. Um, I just like to, I like to imagine Taylor Swift and her her bodyguards around her and she's like yes travis touchdown i love you let's effing go and then they're like ma'am that's the game and then she goes all right and she climbs into a box and they close the door and you know they poke holes in the popcorn machine like from alfin and the chipmunks so that she can breathe Remember that part from Alvin and the Chipmunks? He pokes the holes in the box whenever he throws them out or whatever. That's what they're doing to Taylor Swift. And they poke holes in the popcorn machine so she can breathe. And then they wheel her out and they go, wait, why are there, why are there a bunch of uh, giant bodyguards guarding popcorn? Um, it must be the name brand stuff that they're popping in there. It must be Orville Redenbacher. Okay, they must not be messing around in Chiefs Kingdom. No, no, that's T Swifty in there. And by the time she gets to wherever she had to go to leave Arrowhead Stadium, she hops out and her face is red. She's barely alive. 
they have to pump oxygen into her. And as she's climbing in to, as she's climbing into Travis Kelsey's convertible to ride into the sunset in Kansas City, Missouri, she goes, Travis, is it okay if I bring the oxygen tank on board? I'm so famous that I couldn't leave your family's private box seats without being concealed. Okay. Taylor Swift is like a firearm. Taylor Swift is like a firearm because if you want to take her out in public, you have to conceal her. All right. Uh, Taylor Swift is a conceal carry weapon. If she leaves the house, she has to make sure she's holstered or she is going to just get in trouble. She's going to get swarmed. Okay. Taylor Swift must be concealed like a firearm when she goes out. So if you ever see something that looks a little bit conspicuous in public, right? You see somebody with uh, some luggage that looks just a little bit too full and you go, that's a little suspicious. And you think, man, I wonder if they're like smuggling drugs in the airport. What is that giant bulge coming out of his nice uh, luggage there that looks like expensive luggage? That's not drugs. That is Taylor Swift, all right? If you ever hear something, um, you know, if something ever falls over in your house kind of suspiciously, right? How did that glass of water fall off the table? Check that glass because Taylor Swift might be inside. Okay. If, you know, if you're watching freshmen move into college and they've got those big crates and they're pushing their stuff and, you know, the wheels on those crates are always wild. It's always so hard to keep them going straight. And I live on a very hilly campus. It's a big struggle. It's a big struggle. It's a workout. And if you see one of those crates and you're like, hmm, that one seems a little too heavy. And I'm not calling Taylor Swift fat. It means that Taylor Swift is in there with a bunch of stuff piled on top of her, which then would be heavy. You can infer that there might be an heiress tour near you somewhere. So keep your eyes peeled for people with unusually large bags, backpacks, boxes, And if you see something that's about 5 foot 11 inches tall and it's on wheels and there are large men pushing it around, then take a video and post it online and it'll blow up because everyone knows that Taylor Swift is inside, okay? So, yeah, you know, lover or hater... There is no denying that Taylor is on top of the world right now, and it's really intriguing to see. So let's move on to the whole Travis Kelsey situation. This is fun to talk about, but it's also like laborious because this is all I see when I scroll on social media now. Okay, it's all Taylor Swift. It's all Travis Kelsey. It's all this. It's all that. Okay, I can't watch a football game now without hearing about Taylor Swift. And I'm not being a hater, but it is, uh, it's something. So, look, the whole situation between these two, okay, I'm not wishing bad on anybody, on her or on him. But if they break up, it is going to be very, very fascinating to see where all these people's uh, loyalties will lie after the dust settles. I don't even know if they're officially dating, but um, a lot of people who weren't familiar with Travis Kelsey are now Travis Kelsey fans and some of them the other way around, things like that. They're not even, I don't know if they're officially dating, but the amount of press they're getting is absolutely insane. So, you know, it's an odd duo I never really expected. And when this thing, I don't want to say when, but if this thing blows up, Travis Kelsey might have to leave places in a box because there might be a horde of crazed fans after him looking to assassinate him after this happens. Okay. Taylor Swift fans um, seem to be very protective over her in kind of a weird way. 
is something I've noticed. Um, and that's like big fans of anybody. People that are such big fans of a celebrity or an artist that they like actively defend them. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit strange. Being a fan is one thing, but then like, you know, being that person's personal lawyer, unpaid, behind closed doors when you don't have to be, it's a little bit interesting. It's a little bit interesting. So Travis, I hope you know what you're getting into. Not because you're going to be in a song. You might be, but that's such the stereotypical thing to say. Not because of that, but because you might end up dead after this. I don't want to scare you, Travis. I don't want to scare you. But these people, millions of people, filled every stadium in the country this summer. And they really love her. They really love her. Okay, if you let her down, Travis, watch your back. Watch your back, okay? If you're not... Okay, if you're not already, Travis, just get a firearm, I would say. You live in Missouri, right? I'm sure the laws there are pretty laxed on that type of thing, but all I'm saying is if you upset Taylor, things could go bad for you. Things could go bad, okay? So just be careful. Don't let her down. Don't hurt her feelings. It might cost you your life. So, yeah. But the whole Chiefs-Bears game uh, this weekend, a lot of people were saying, or there was like a, what am I, what am I trying to say? The whole vibe of the whole Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey thing this past Sunday felt like a high school football homecoming king and queen type of deal right it felt like Travis Kelsey's the homecoming king on the field and you know um Taylor's on the bleachers type of deal and a lot of people thought this was cool they were like oh my gosh this is so cute it's like they're a high school couple it's so this is the American dream guys this is it this is what everyone dreams of People were really, really into this. And for me, that whole feeling uh, made me sick to my stomach a little bit. It felt weird. Okay. Both these people are in their mid-30s and they're being compared to 17-year-old kids in high school. Look, I know in every TV show, the high schoolers are played by like 45-year-olds. I know, I know. But... It's just weird. And one thing about Taylor Swift I've noticed is it does seem like a lot of, like, her stuff is very, like, juvenile. I don't know. I could be wrong. I haven't listened. I know, like, three of her songs. I can't talk. But, like, it does seem like a lot of her stuff is, like, I don't know how to put it into words. But... You know, them two being compared to high schoolers, it's kind of sad if you ask me, okay, who wants to sit around and daydream about high school? Look, I can only speak for myself, but not me. I don't want to. I don't want to. Not that high school is bad, but it's just not where we're at anymore. So, and it's definitely not where Travis and Taylor are anymore. They're both superstars. They're both making millions of dollars a year. And they're being compared to people that vape in the bathroom. And, you know, not, not really what I'm into. Not really what I'm into. So, <sighs> I'm really tired of talking about this and thinking about Taylor Swift. I'm not a hater, but I am kind of tired of it. Um, just talking about it. So let's move on to something else. Let's move on to something that hasn't been covered by the entire world already. The Senate just passed a dress code. Um, 
because of John Fetterman's love of Carhartt. Now, John Fetterman, if you're not familiar, which I think most people are familiar, but, you know, he would show up in D.C. wearing the Adam Sandler fit every day. He's a big guy. He would wear, you know, probably a 2X, 3X Carhartt hoodie, some basketball shorts, and then some shoes that my dad would mow the lawn in. And, you know, he kind of got a lot of hate for it, right? He's a senator and he's wearing that. Um, I am not of that opinion. I think it's honestly pretty cool. I think it's savage. All right. We all know that being a politician is not a real job. And look, Fetterman doesn't even like to dress like it is a real job. Um, guys, we're having more issues with the brightness. It looks like I'm in a cave. It's, I don't know if my camera screwed up. Hold on. All right. I really don't know what's wrong with it, but it's done that like the past two weeks that I do an episode. Kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I think it's kind of savage that he does this. I think it's funny. Okay. Being a politician is not a real job. Okay. In fact, I wish they got rid of this dress code and I wish that they just let anything go in the Senate chamber. Okay. I want to see senators dress up in Halloween costumes every year for Halloween. I think that'd be funny. Um, Maybe they could wear, like, you know how NASCAR drivers wear the big jumpsuits with all their sponsors on it? I want to see every congressman every Halloween dress up in a custom NASCAR jumpsuit, but in their, all the sponsors on the NASCAR jumpsuit are just the lobbyists that pay their bills and influence their vote. Okay, I think that'd be pretty cool. Let's see where your money truly comes from. All right. The annual salary of a senator is like 200K, but they all have 18 lakefront properties, oceanfront properties all over the country. They're all worth $100 million. I want to know where that came from. All right. So let's get those uh, NASCAR jumpsuits with BlackRock, Vanguard, um, you know, Lockheed Martin, Those would be pretty tough. I might even have to buy one, okay? If you release those for sale, that would be be a tough Halloween costume. That would go hard. So, you know, I think around Christmas time, they turn Mitch McConnell into Santa. And then during a session of Congress, if you want to raise a point, if you'd like to speak, um, you have to go up to Mitch McConnell dressed as Santa, and you have to sit on his lap, and whatever proposition you'd like to make for our country, you have to ask Mitch like it's something that's on your Christmas list. Wouldn't that be fun? I think it would be fun. Look, politics today is all theatrics. It's all about who can roast each other better, or who can get a better soundbite for their campaign commercials, that will run 24-7 next year. That's what it's all about. And since it's all theatrics, and we all know it's theatrics, why don't we have legitimate theatrics take place during Senate hearings, all right? Make it like a game of Dungeons and Dragons or something. Something stupid, like the kids from Stranger Things playing in their basement in season one. Okay, Speaker McCarthy, you are the dungeon master. You get to lead the game. All right. I just think it's funny that, you know, during campaign season, every single candidate just insults and roasts and memes their way to get into their office. But then as soon as they get in office, they act like they have the most serious job in the world. Okay, they'll run commercials just trying to make themselves look good, but really it makes them look dumb. They they uh they compete on Twitter to see who gets ratioed against their opponent. Oh my gosh, more replies than likes. But then the second they put on that suit and walk into office when they get elected, they become 
the most important people in the world. And how dare you question my power, okay? It's just funny. Let's get real. Um, You don't have an important job. Nobody cares. If you're in Congress, you're probably a loser. I'm just going to say it. I'm not trying to be mean, but anyone who wants to get into politics... I don't know. I just, you probably wouldn't be fun at a party. Besides Lauren Boebert, okay, probably has the IQ of, you know, probably has the IQ of a chimpanzee. But I feel like Lauren Boebert could party. You know, at least someone like her doesn't take her job too serious, okay? Um, we need more politicians like that, though. Like, yeah, go to the movie theater and get caught on video doing something stupid that you shouldn't. Who cares? Everyone knows your job is fake. All right. We need more politicians like that on both sides of the aisle. So if Hunter Biden runs like a, runs a campaign for senator, he has my vote because I know if he gets in there, he knows, I know, we all know his job's fake. Um, so just, you know, smoke crack in the office or whatever you got to do. So, but yeah, let's get real. Get rid of this dress code. Let's throw the Carhartt hoodie on and let's talk policy, guys. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Phillies are back in the playoffs. Now, I think Citizens Bank Park has the best playoff atmosphere in all of sports. I'm a Phillies fan, so I ha- I'm a little biased in that manner. But do me a favor and watch the highlight reel of Philly's playoff moments from last year and try to tell me that that is not, like, the best crowd you've ever seen. All right. Now, I'm excited to see that crowd again this year. I think it'll be really hype again. Maybe not as hype as last year because last year um, they were coming off an 11-year playoff drought. So obviously the place is going to be rocking But I hope that it's rocking again this year. Can't wait to see it. I want to see him make another deep run in the playoffs. Last year, I didn't really start watching football until like November because I was so invested in the Phillies playoff run that I didn't really even have time or care to watch the NFL. This year, it's been different. Um, I have been watching football more this year than last year, but yeah, I hope to see the Phillies make another deep run. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen last year, even though they didn't win at all. That team was not expected to do anything, had a really up and down year, and then the second they get in the playoffs, they just explode, and it was it was a joy to see. So, And this, team's, this year's team is even better than last year's record-wise. So I... I have high expectations. I don't want to get them too high, but really excited to see what they do this year. Um, Sad that Reese Hoskins will not be playing this year. Huge spark for the team last year. But yeah, excited to see what they do. So that will conclude episode 22, guys. If you made it this far, thank you so much. You're appreciated. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We will see you next week. And also, I hope I didn't insult any Taylor Swift fans. Um, I hope that uh, you understand I am just as intrigued by her as you are, even though I wouldn't call myself a fan. My level of intrigue has never been higher. So thanks for watching. We will see you next week.